In this video, we're going to talk about functions, what they mean, and just the notation surrounding it. So first of all, a function is a way to map inputs onto outputs. So for example, it could be a graph. When we talked about linear equations, linear equations are in fact examples of a function. When we had something like y equals 3x plus 5, and the graph looked like this, Instead of y equals 3x plus 5, we could write it as f of x equals 3x plus 5. So here's what it's saying. So here then, if we write it like that, here's what this f of x, this function, is really representing. It's representing a way to take the x's and turn them into something else. Uh, and you're always doing that same thing when you're turning it into something else. So for example, if x is 1, this 3x plus 5 is going to output 3 times 1 plus 5. The corresponding y value would be 8. But that process of multiply by 3 and then add 5 is the same no matter what x you plug in. That's what a function is. It's doing the same thing no matter what x you plug in. If you plug in x equals 2, you're still going to do the same thing. You're going to multiply it by 3, then you're going to add 5, and then you're going to get another output, and that's f of, uh, f of 2. So notation-wise, if you wanted to find the specific output, the specific y value, when x is uh, 8 versus x is 10 versus x is any other number, you're just going to do f of that x value. So if you wanted to find the y value when x is 10, you're going to ask yourself, what's f of 10? So what does f of 10 mean? When you look at f of 10, that's basically a number. That is specifically the y value when x is 10. So that's the, that's the difference. If you were to look at this f of x versus f of 3, big picture, one of these guys is an equation. The other is a number. So f of 3 is a number. It's a specific output when x is 3. This guy, though, is the equation. It's, it's representing what you do to any generic thing that you would hypothetically input. Now, a couple of points on notation. There is nothing special about the letter y or x or even f. So with this whole process, if we were to instead, if I were to say, you know, we have a totally new equation here. We have uh, h of p equals 4p plus 10 or something. And the graph looks like this, where the intercept is 10, the slope is 4. Here, if, uh, you know, so here, if I were to ask you what's h of 11, all you do is you plug in 11 in for p. Because again, here, your x variable is really called p here. So if you're looking at price and quantity or something here, again, the thing inside the function, inside that, that's your input variable. It's your independent variable. And the thing on the outside, your dependent variable or your y variable is whatever h of p is, right? So Sometimes they'll have something like q equals h of p. That just means that's your y variable, your output variable. So again, whatever that function equals is your output variable. Whatever's on the inside is your input variable. So again, this is just notation. Uh, let's do a couple examples uh, that are maybe tricky. Let's look at this one example here. If f of x equals 4x squared plus 5, what is f of y? I mean, looking at that, that seems really freaky. Like, what is f of y? I don't know. Like, why is this whole thing? What is f of that? Huh. Well, let's ask ourselves an easier, in general, a general thing whenever you get stuck on a math problem is this. What's an easier version of the question? Let me answer an easier version of the question and then build myself up. So instead of asking ourselves what's f of y, let's ask ourselves what's f of 4. So if I were to give you this guy and ask you what's f of 4, you'd answer it by saying, well, f of 4 is 4 times, you just replace the x with a 4, right? And you'd get a number. So similarly, it's no different if I were to ask you what's f of y. You literally just replace the x with a y. It's 4y squared plus 5. If I were to ask you what's f of, uh, of you know, q, you'd say that's 4q squared plus 5, right? So again, just getting used to Whatever this inside is, you just replace that thing with what you're trying to find. Right? 
a uh, couple more things. There's this thing called the vertical line test. Uh, and, and here's where that comes from. The definition of a function is this. It's that for every input, there's exactly one output. So if I were to say what's f of 4, it can't be that there's two different numbers that are f of 4. f of 4 should be a unique number. So what that means then graphically is this. Is that if you were to look at your function, your function can't look something like this. If your function looks like this, and if I were to ask you what's f of 4, well, let's see. To find f of 4, you go to where x is 4, and you'll find the y value. All right, well, the y value is this guy. But wait, it's also this negative guy, right? So if that's the case, then f of 4 is two different numbers. It's this output and that output. And that's not allowed. That's illegal. I mean, you can have a graph like that. It just wouldn't be called a function. And so that it fails what we call the vertical line test. You just make a vertical line. And if your function hits it in more than one spot, that's failed that test. And then that graph that you have is not a function. So a circle is not a function. A parabola, on the other hand, is a function. Because again, you know, as you go through it, it's like, oh yeah, it, uh, there's no vertical line where it hits it twice. Uh, all right, so there's that. Last last uh, thing here for today is what if there's multiple variables? What if you have like three different x variables and one y variable? So if you were to have an equation like, you know, y equals 4x1 plus 3x2 plus 5 or something, this is basically saying that y is, you know, it's a function of x1 and x2, right? And again, it doesn't, there's nothing special about these things with subscript. If I were to just give you literally like, you know, m equals uh, 3n squared plus 5p plus z, well, here your function m is just like it's a function of what are the all the different input variables, n, p, and z. So really, anytime you see a function where on the inside there's commas, all that means is that there's more than one x variable that's being used to get your output.